How's it going guys? It's Dr. Luo with Advanced Spine and Pain Center. So today we're talking about Spinal Cord Simulator. So this is one of the newer technology that is minimally invasive and it just excels so fast in the last five to 10 years. So there are some indications that typically we use Spinal Cord Simulators for. In the past, what we have tried to do where most of the research is done is for complex regional pain syndrome as well as failed back syndrome or failed neck syndrome. Meaning if you had a back surgery, that it just didn't help or maybe help with a certain portion of the pain and you still persistently have a different portion of the back pain or neck pain. Nowadays, the indication is expanded tremendously. So there are people who get spinal cord simulator for severe, severe diabetic neuropathy. There are people who get it for hip pain, knee pain after hip and knee replacements. And there are people who get it for shingles as well, temporary. So the technology involves putting two electrical leads in the back. Now, depends on what you're trying to treat. So if you're trying to treat back, leg, hip, knee, we typically put these leads in the mid-back area. Now, if you're trying to treat neck and hand pain, we try to tr put the electrical leads in the really high cervical, which is the neck area. So, so prior to the procedure, you will visit with a pain psychologist to evaluate. Now there are two phases to the spinal cord simulator. Stage one or phase one is the trial. This is one of the few procedures that you get a test run for the procedure. So during the trial, the electrical leads are tunneled under your skin to your back and you wear it for about seven days. At the end of the seven days, you let us know if this is helpful or not. And after that, you kind of determine if this is helpful and if you want to move on to stage two or phase two, which is the spinal cord simulator implant. Now let's take a look at lumbar spinal cord simulator trial. So this is a patient who came to me after the patient had persistent pain and she no longer wants to take opioids because it's causing significant side effect. So her main pain is in the right hip and this is after a right hip replacement. Now we have tried different conservative medication that's non-opioid. We have tried to do different injections around the area, but the patient persistently have the pain. Now the patient also visited with her hip surgeon and her hip surgeon did not think there's additional surgery that could be done. So I recommended a spinal cord simulator trial. So the procedure is done with some light sedation in office. Most of the patient are awake However, some patient may fall asleep during certain portion because their sensitivity to the sedation medication. Numbing medication is injected at the insertion site. Next, guide needles are inserted to reach the epidural space. These needles are hollow in the, on the inside. So the leads, which are made of plastic and metal contacts, are then threaded in the epidural space under the skin to reach the desired area. In this patient, we're advancing to the mid-back area Afterwards, the hollow guide needles are removed with leads staying in place. Medical glue and tape are used to ensure minimal lead movement during the trial. So the leads will be coming out from the skin and connected to an outside battery. The patient will be wearing the leads and battery for about seven days during the trial. During the seven days, I ask you not to bathe and shower as the, that can get the dressing wet. At the end of the seven days, you'll evaluate your pain relief with the device and see if it's worthwhile. So the guidelines to actually proceed with the spinal cord simulator implant is only 50% of the pain relief. Now, I think if you are only getting 50%, that is not enough to proceed with the implant. What I recommend is you should get at least 70, 80, 90% before we proceed with the implant. The issue is that if you get 50%, that may not be worthwhile for you in a year. So I really don't want to implant a spinal cord simulator in you and then just to take it out a year later. That is just not right. As far as the removal, the leads are removed in the clinic. So here you can see how the leads are just carefully removed without any significant pain. Now, once you do decide to undergo the spinal cord simulator implant, we will get authorization to do it either at a surgical center or a hospital. This is, the, this is typically done with general anesthesia. For the procedure, the patient is induced with general anesthesia. An incision is made in the back for the guide needle. Then the needle are threaded in the epidural space in the back. 
The needle are then anchored down to the soft tissue. A battery pocket is created on the side. The leads are tunneled under the skin to connect to the battery. Antibiotics are provided in the pocket itself. The incisions are sutured with absorbable sutures. For the trial, the typically lasts about 30 minutes or an hour. And for the implant, the procedure typically lasts an hour and a half to two hours. But plan to be there a little bit longer. Do not wear any metallic objects, especially around the uh, waist area. You may be asked to change into a gown completely. And also, do not chew any gum. As far as uh, other diet for the trial as well as the implant, please fast for at least eight hours. So that means no coffee, no solid food for at least eight hours. Go ahead and continue taking your regular blood pressure, seizure, thyroid, gastric reflux medication. But go ahead and take it with a small sip of water and that would be okay not violating the eight hour rule. However, if you take any blood thinner, please be sure to let your physician know we would need to stop your blood thinner. We may have to ask you to stop at least seven days to 14 days. So by far the most common is soreness and pain during the procedure and as well as after the procedure. Now bleeding, bleeding can be in the form of bleeding inside the spine and bleeding superficially. It's very important to let us know if you're taking any blood thinner because if you do take blood thinner, that risk of bleeding inside the spine is a lot greater. Theoretically, you can have infection and also if the leads are placed too deep, you can puncture the layer of the cerebral spinal fluid and then you can get a really bad headache. Now for the spinal cord simulator trial, those are the main risks. Now for the implant, there's additional risk of infection in the pocket itself where the battery will be fluid collection in the battery, the battery flipping, as well as lead migration and lead fracture. Now, so for the trial, please do not shower and bathe for seven days. Do not get the dressing wet. For the implant, I would say it would be okay for you to shower the very next day and then don't bathe for about three to seven days. All right, hopefully that's all the questions you have about spinal cord simulator. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to answer it as best as I can.